this, this is as straight up as it gets. Right, so, um, so, yeah, first off, bro, I mean, your name. Uh, Anthony Ocampo Jr., also known as The Real AOJ on Instagram. So this is a 1977 Harley Davidson FLH, also known as a shovelhead. I bought the bike in 2022. Oh, no, 2021, cool. sorry. How, how did you come across it? Because uh, it was already pretty damn immaculate when you came across yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, before I had, before I got this bike, I had a uh, 2006 Harley Davidson Softail Deluxe. As much as I liked the bike, I didn't enjoy it as much, only because it was such a big bike and like it wasn't really my riding style. Because I like to split lanes and move the bike around like a BMX, you know what I mean? The Softail Deluxe was more like a big beach cruiser. <laughs> I put that bike up for sale and I actually made money on it sold it to a guy in the navy for fourteen thousand five hundred. i mean i put some money into it but i still came out on top so i was sitting on that cash and i've always wanted a shovel head so on offer up i have the notification to you know send me updates on when a new shovel head pops up and one popped up and it was uh this bike what, what city was this uh it was in covina yeah and i actually became friends with the guy that sold it to me his name is rocco he ha he had a collection dude he need he was strapped for cash he was asking 13 five for this bike and I was like man I don't have that kind of money actually I did have that money but um, I didn't want to spend that kind of money on an old bike you know we developed a relationship and I texted him every day asking him if he sold the bike and he kept saying no and then like three weeks later the bike was still up that's when I just sent him like a picture of cash <laughs> it was funny I sent him a picture of nine thousand dollars I said this could be yours and then that day he was like you know what man you're a cool dude why don't you come out here look at it and we'll talk about it I was like okay I called my buddy up he picks me up in his truck we trek out there to uh covina we pull up the bike is just sitting there in the driveway i'm like oh shit that's the bike long story short he sold it to me for nine thousand dollars it was funny because the bike wouldn't start and he was <laughs> and he was like it just started of course like when you're selling something like everything gets messed up like the day of the bike wouldn't start he flooded the car he said he never kicked it because it's like high compression or whatever because this is a stroker yeah and we'll get into that later but the battery dies and like it's just a dud. I'm like, fuck, I don't know if I want it. <laughs> you know, cause it wasn't, it didn't start. I wanted to hear it. And he had sent me videos of it already started, but you know, you can't really trust videos. You yeah. want to see it live. So I was like, maybe the, the plugs got wet from you trying to start it all the time. Cause he kept like pulling the throttle squirting 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 no start and then it started like leaking a bunch of fuel i was like oh shit he flooded it and i don't think rocco really like works on bikes he just like has sick bikes so like he didn't know what to do so i was like let's pull the plugs let's dry it out he didn't have a wire brush so his bro buddy came let us borrow a wire brush we Same brushed plugs, right? yeah we brushed the plugs and then uh it started after like two hours, <laughs> two hours? yeah i was waiting there for two hours something like that it was a long time but like like i said we we had already like curated this relationship so like he and i were just chopping it up the whole time you know yeah the bike starts i ride it around the block and then the bike dies up the street <laughs> like it just dies on me like it just lost power no it just died because there was no more gas oh my god <laughs> but i knew it ran and i ripped it around his neighborhood i get back to his house and um yeah we, we made the deal and i bought the bike i rode it from covina which is i don't know maybe 30 miles one way mm from Covina to my house. And then the bike dies again when I get off the freeway because it ran out of gas. So it had the old um, Sportster tanks where the petcock is right in the middle. So like all the gas that was here even wasn't get. wasn't even being used because oh. the petcock was right here and yeah this frame is like straight yeah back huh? yeah so it like yeah it tilts the gas back so <laughs> it's funny thank god my buddy was following me and had to buy a jerry can and then filled it up and yeah. i brought it home and then over the years i mean you guys seen <laughs> all the different versions that this bike has gone through did you have an idea of its final form or like not final but like yeah. this stage did you have this no you know you know what when i when i put these bikes together like I never have like an end vision like like I'll put it together and I'll because I, I like to build the bike as I ride it okay. you know what I mean so like I'm not doing much fabrication I'm just like accessorizing the bike and just switching shit out so like I want to make sure that the bike is never down like I want to be able to ride it it's like an outfit you know what I mean like I, I change I change things on the bike like like it's a part of your wardrobe so like it went through many many phases and um the way it came to this version was i knew born free was coming this year uh back in december i had an idea i bought a new tank and i just wanted to switch up the look and like the color scheme or whatever i saw this pan head 
um, online that Chemical Candy, I think that's his Instagram, Chemical Candy had painted and the, the tank just looked so good. It was a skinny or a narrow uh, sporty tank like this and long skinny flames just like this. Mm. And I was like, man, those flames are sick. So I hit up Jeremiah CK Meaty J, I think that's his Instagram. And I was like, hey man, I have an idea. I'm gonna switch, switch up the look of the bike for Born Free 14 and I want you to paint it. So he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. Drive up to Jeremiah's place and he lives uh, in the San Gabriel Valley area, which isn't close. But yeah, I get over there. And before I, I dropped the tank off, he and I were kind of bouncing off ideas with each other through text. He was sending me some sick flames that he thought would look good based off of like the idea I had. And I was like, yeah, let's run it. And then he came up with the idea of doing Gold Flake. And I was like, have you ever done Gold Flake? He was like, no. I was like, fuck it. Yeah, let's do Gold Flake then. I was like, if anyone's going to do a Gold Flake, right, you're well, going to do uh, it. The Gold Leaf. Or the Gold Leaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Wait, who brought it up? You did it. Jeremiah. He, and he didn't even know how. He doesn't know how. Yeah, this yeah. is the first time he's ever done Gold Leaf. And I'm the type of person, like, I want my homie to test themselves. You know what I mean? If you're going to fuck up, at least you could fuck up on a homie's tank. You know what I mean? So I was like, fuck it, run it. And he was like, okay. And, um, yeah, he, he got to, to working on the tank and... Um, he was sending me, like he always sends me updates and he sent me an update of him like molding the welds. And then he sent me uh, an update of him primering everything ready to like lay down the design. And then he gets T-boned. And then like, I feel so terrible for the guy, man. So he said December is when you dropped it off. Yeah. And then when, when did he say the accident? I forget. I think his accident was like in January or February. Oh, I okay. can't remember. Like in the middle of him working on this tank. So I felt horrible, man. And I know like when you go through a traumatic experience like that, like, I mean, obviously physically is, 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 is kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, but more so mentally, like that shit can suck the life out of a person. You know what I mean? So I was I, just like, man, take your time. Like, it's not even a priority to me. Like my priority is making sure you're good. So like during that whole process, I try to like be there for him just by you know, encouraging him. Like, man, your, your comeback's going to be better than, you know, your setback and stuff like that. You're I was like, telling me that you text him like almost every day. No, uh, not every day but i would like i would text him whenever he crossed my mind like oh, yeah. i'm that type of person like if you cross my mind i'm gonna text you yeah and that's what i was doing and um i hope that those, those words of encouragement you know helped him get through his his recovery mm -hmm. but um i think it was almost 10 weeks later that's when he was like okay i think i'm gonna he, he texted me he's like, i think i'm gonna pick up a gun today and i'm gonna you know practice spraying i was like fuck hell yeah during that time again i was just trying to give him encouraging words and, and then a couple weeks after that literally two weeks before born free this was the result damn two weeks before. yeah that's right i remember so you went there and slapped it on no he oh. came down he dropped it off like this was kind of his like his comeback and I mean, look at it, man. It's fucking gorgeous. You know what I mean? He crushed it. Like this, this, this tank to me is like it's very sentimental, just because of the, 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 the you know, the things he had to go through, and like this is like a phoenix. You know what I mean? He came out of the fucking, the fire and just fucking exceeded my expectations man he, i remember he was walking up we were at ace's house on the west side of long beach and he was walking up holding the tank and i was like holy shit dude because he sent me pictures you know but like pictures don't do this tank justice man bro i hope video does somewhat yeah and and the fact that like and the fact that like you know he went through what he went through and still came out with this fucking vicious tank like it's insane yeah, I think it's equally as important the the memories that are made on this bike also let alone yeah. the experiences as yeah. well, everything that goes into it. Yeah. And like I mentioned like uh during that process like we already had the color scheme which was black and gold mm -hmm. and the uh the cream uh pinstripe. Okay. Yeah. But while he still was working on the tank like that's when i was like updating everything like putting the gold ac you know accents on the engine uh well it's brass but i mean oh, okay it looks gold mm -hmm. but um so it's st <laughs> it's funny because it yeah, started it start, with okay so um god i don't even know his name and i feel terrible that i don't know his name but a guy who runs speed trap choppers uh -huh. he makes like these knobs for um this carburetor and um before he started making these knobs, he was only doing it for the SNS carb, the Super E. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey man, um, I really like your bike. Um, what do you think about me sending you a part and you, you can R&D it for me? I was like, hell yeah. So he sent me this um, idle screw adjuster first. Okay, so first was that. Yeah, it was this. And then he and I were kind of just texting each other. And the first version that he made, it, 
it didn't work. So he made another one and then he said, and then that one worked, which is what's on now. And then he made this, which is the choke knob. Oh, okay. And then he made these longer thumb screw. I like that, um, dude. Bowl, float bowl. Robbie well, rebuilding my float bowl the screws. other day if I could yeah. shoot. Damn. Yeah, and then I picked these up from old stuff, these um, push rod cover things or push rod keepers. And then I actually bent these myself. The stock ones are like an eighth inch uh -huh. uh, tube. And then I upgraded it to a quarter inch so it gets more oil flow. And then, and, and the stock ones use these rubber grommets. Yeah, or what's in these then? These rubber seals. This uses a, a like a brass, like a crush, like a crush seal. I don't know how to explain it, and but it's, it you, seals up way better. And I got that concept from from old stuff because I had the old stuff uh, hard oil lines, mm -hmm. and then that's where I got the idea of fuck, I can make this myself. Dude, did you? Uh, you told me you used the Harbor Freight bender. Little yeah, bender I bought a little. Yep, yeah, I bought a Harbor Freight bender to bend these up. Hell yeah! And then I and got. So you did these too, right? You said. Yeah, I made this and this. Dude, so yeah, sick. yeah, but like it doesn't leak oil, and that's like my thing. Like, uh -huh. a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's supposed to leak oil." Like, I don't believe that, man. <laughs> like, I believe like this bike can be just as like clean and maintained like a newer M8 motor. You know? Yeah. It just takes a little more effort. Exactly, and you which is pay, like you if have patience, bro. A lot of patience, which is like if you follow my IG, why I always tweak out on this bike because <laughs> whenever there's like an issue, like I right away I order a new part but it would be an upgraded part, right? Yeah. And then like, I slap it on. And in that process, I, I did redid all my oil lines, pick these. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say you, I mean, there's not a detail spared on this whole bike. Yeah, right? you, yeah you get eat off this. And then like, these were like crusty, so I bought these new oil fittings. Um, yeah. Okay, I know a lot of people are asking about the exhaust too. Like, I, I, I knew a couple of buddies that were like, yeah. Dude, one is that? Like? Yeah, so uh, a guy named Kevin out of Florida. Okay. Uh, his Instagram is Heads Forever, which is why he has his. Uh, his brand on there mm -hmm. but uh kevin kevin made those for me and he originally he made a set i believe it was for his bike or it may have been for somebody else's bike but i saw him and i was like yo man like i want those pipes he was like oh i'm about to raffle a set i was like hell yeah so i entered his raffle it was a hundred dollars or something like that and i fucking didn't win yeah and i and i was telling him fucking <laughs> I, I, I like we were messaging each other. I was like, dude, I still want the pipes. Like, yeah. like, can I buy a set off of you? You know? And he was like, look, like, since you bought into the raffle, I'll put the the hundred dollars that you put in the raffle towards the cost of the pipes. Oh, okay. So I pay like six hundred bucks for them or something oh, like that. Damn. And he made them for me. Yeah. Dude, that's. And then did you go get these chrome? No, I had them polished. Oh, polished. Yeah, because okay. this is all stainless. Oh, that's this right. is all. This is made of uh, stainless steel. So when I got them, they were kind of that like dull stainless. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then I I brought them to a, a polisher guy and I had them polished. Oh, nice. Yeah. Damn. And then uh, what what details can you give me on this front wheel? Cause, man, um, just... So the wheel set is uh, oh, authentic. Yeah, authentic Baranis. Okay. Um, uh, Matt Carroll, a buddy of mine, Matt Carroll also known as old nipple twister on instagram he built them so like hub spokes and everything yeah uh, i don't know the name i don't know the brand of the hub but the rim is tough dude. but these are uh um, yeah barani barani wheels made in italy what? yeah stainless spokes stainless nipples Jeez, i'm gonna look at the back real quick i didn't even catch yeah. that it was a set because i remember um, you had mags on this at some point. Oh, not mags. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, before this, I had the uh, black and I had the 2118. Um, fuck, I forgot the name of the those rims, but they didn't have like this this high shoulder. It was just like uh, a smooth. Yeah, this high shoulder is yeah nice, man. And then I know you ain't freaking cuckoo on this back. I love it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, give us a deep dive, cause dude. All right. Um, the rear the rear rotor is a Lindel. I forget what model it is. Ah. Um, the caliper carrier is by um, Speed Dealer. No, not Speed Dealer. Billet Proof Designs. Billet Proof? Yeah, and then Performance Machine Calipers. Oh yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. And then uh, these are Ace Hardware, these all the bolts. And then I just pol hand polish them myself. There it is.
the peak is yeah and then i made these so i didn't know how how it was going to work yeah talk to me yeah so like uh, <laughs> and like there's no information online you know yeah, so yeah. like i just figured there there was this this was supposed to be for like a banjo uh -huh. obviously and then this is the bleeder yes. this had a bleeder and this had a banjo i said so i thought to myself maybe if i just connect a banjo to a banjo to a banjo <laughs> all the way to the master it'll work yeah. and i wasn't even sure if it was gonna work well, you, and it ended <laughs> it ended up fucking being fucking money dude <laughs> these brakes like they would stop so good <laughs> well, hella stop, bro. yeah like i can skid anywhere like easily you know i mean not that i want to but yeah and then it, then, it stops really really good uh, and like these brake lines i was gonna say this is real short how, how do you go about all that um i had to make them so these are kind of i think they're by goodyear i forget the name of the uh -huh. brand but they make like a kit where you can make your own lines oh, wow. and then you just like trim it yourself and then these good yeah dude that's really convenient yeah I yeah was, yeah like, yeah i was like dude and that's another thing i had to research because i was like hey where am i gonna get custom lines you know that yeah, to jump that, from one break to the other yeah that are that are the, gonna be the link that i need because they don't sell that off the shelf right yeah i was questioning that when i saw that yeah but then that's when I thought, thought to myself too. I'm like, wait, I don't see a lot of dual caliper setups like that. So yeah. let me see. Like uh, most guys, when they run dual caliper, they'll run one caliper to the the uh, handlebar, uh -huh. and then one caliper to the foot. Oh. That way, when that way, they don't have to run a front brake. And if they're running like a suicide. Uh, a suicide shifter or whatever yeah. or a jockey shifter yeah, and a yeah. suicide clutch they can, still hold the brake. they can hold the brake with the front oh. the front hand because you know i don't know if you've ever ridden a fucking i have i have yeah when you're on a hill that shit's a bitch not having a front brake like we have hill yet, <laughs> yeah so a lot of guys that run to dual caliper they'll set it up like that oh, okay but i don't have a suicide clutch so like i just ran it both in line with you know in sync or whatever yeah that is so tight so originally this sissy bar it was short it came up to like right here. Oh, okay. And I like the design of it, so I took it uh, to- Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I took it to Scotty, uh, Junior's Handmade, uh -huh. and I said, hey, I wanna keep this design, but I wanna extend it. So he said, okay, we'll just chop it from here and here. And then he just made this, he made this part. Oh, this, okay. And he made the uh, the plate too, with the tail light mount. Oh, that's clean. What tail light is this? Um, it's a custom one. So this bike, it's a crazy story. This bike was originally owned by a guy named Rick Swadener. And Rick is like a legend in the Midwest. He's from Indianapolis, I, I believe. He saw my bike online and he messages me. He said, I like what you did to my old bike. I was like, oh shit, you used to own this. So he sold it to a guy on the West Coast. That guy sold it to the Rocco who I bought it from. And then I was like, man, like, can you tell me more about the engine because i don't know what engine you know what yeah. what engine modifications are are done to this because all you knew that it was high compression right yeah and fucking he tells me he's like oh yeah it's basically a 93 inch stroker i was like oh shit Ooh. i was like no wonder it's fucking peppy you know yeah. like because this thing hauls ass Dude. and if you've ridden me with me on the freeway like this thing moves you know what i mean so it's a 93 inch cu uh, 93 cubic inch shovel head motor has the sns top end three five eighths inch uh, big bore pistons uh four and a half inch crank and a sns flywheel line weber l5 cam like it, he hopped it up you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like because those guys in the midwest um so a guy named ben jeff he also works in the shop that rick rick owns uh -huh. and rick is ben jeff's uh uh, mentor and ben jeff builds sick like hot rod choppers you know so like it, it kind of made sense that this motor was like it's like a hot rod motor oh, which is okay. why i put the makuni because they only run makunis on all their engines oh uh, and those guys are all show and all go. all go yeah. Yeah, yeah and i don't know if you've seen ben jeffs he was an invited builder I this year that name. he had the evo build uh this year and that thing is sick dude like it's a big engine <laughs> like those guys like to go fast you know yeah and that's like so. the style I, I i like i like to i like to ride my shit you know what i mean like i don't just it just doesn't look good like it has to ride better than it looks yeah, like that's yeah. my motto you know let's start on the front end sure, so yeah. yeah this is mullins uh super narrow trees uh for a 39 millimeter front end mm -hmm. uh these are the stock show uh fork legs and then i just had a um the, the, the guy that I got them from shaved them down, and then I just had everything polished. Man, these were six over, right? Or? No, no, these are four over, four over with a one-inch plug. Oh, and I only did the one-inch so you don't see 
and that and it's flush, bro. Yeah, and you don't see the thing because I didn't like that it was going to be gold up here. Uh -huh. I wanted it to be all silver, so I got the one inch plug, which like was perfect because like it's yeah, tucked yeah. in there and you don't see it. And then I picked these up from fuck, I forget the name of the company, but they're titanium nitride. Oh, that's how they come. I thought you said yeah, the other. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh. They're titanium nitride, and they use titanium nitride to like uh, coat. Uh, the barrels for guns it's that strong so like it will never flake it'll never scratch you know what i mean How like you come across that source because like i wouldn't have ever like i just googled oh, okay. gold forks because i see i would <laughs> i would see these i would see these forks on like sport bikes yeah. you know what i mean yeah, like I always like, the sport bikes have those yeah. with the inverted forks you know what i mean so you see like what the process was called or something no and i just looked online i was like fuck i just searched 39 millimeter gold forks tc bro sells them lowbrow sells them. i was like oh Oh, shit they sell gold forks but the ones that they have aren't like this shiny finish it's more of like a Almost it's a like machine. a matte gold yeah. yeah like a machine gold and i was like ah that's not gonna go with like the color scheme that i'm going with you know i wanted it to be like chrome yeah and then that's when i found this company and i think they're in oceanside oh nice yeah so like i did <laughs> i literally ordered these like the week before born free and they overnighted it to me so i got them the next day uh, and then i was doing the the weekend before born free was a uh, reunion so i put them on for the reunion show and it was like everyone was like what the hell when when did you think about doing that you know <laughs> like oh, bro, i was like it literally just happened in a day <laughs> so good like that and like i've done fork so like i literally swapped it out in like an hour you know and then the handlebars are made by my boy uh aaron yeah. ace ace made these bars uh, straight from his garage Dude, that guy's, um, he's got, Ace has got it going on. Yeah, man, he's a low key, he's like a, like one of the most underrated like fabricator guys that I know. Yeah, he is an underground underdog. Yeah, sure. he is, he is an underground underdog. And then um, the fork stop is from. I didn't even catch that. Bro. Yeah, so this is the fork stop and it just hits like so the neck. Sick. Wait, how are those mounted? Uh, to the bolts oh. from the, uh, Handlebars. Nice, dude. Yeah. So where did you say those were from? Uh, some guy in Australia makes them. They're like, it was only like thirty dollars too. No. Way. Yeah, Dang, like the shipping. Value, I think the shipping costs as much as the fucking actual part. Dude, that's great. <laughs> what the heck? So that, oh, and these are on this frame, huh? That, uh, yeah. This that is yeah. Mount. The neck is untouched. Okay, so that the only thing that I did chop off was like where the speedo mounts or whatever, and then I uh, welded a uh, bung in there so I could put my tank. Oh, nice. Yeah. Damn, dude. Hey, yeah, yeah, point out any detail. I mean, don't get me wrong. We we see it. We yeah, see yeah, it, yeah. But like, uh, I know there's little things that like, oh, I bet you didn't know this. Yeah. So uh, the the F and A headlight. Yeah. Everyone knows about that. I got this little I don't know spacer thing from Ace Hardware. Um, I swapped out the bolts because they came with like these black nitride bolts, and. Um, I got these stainless ones, but the stainless bolts had the knurls on them. Oh, I know so what you're talking I, so about. I put it in a drill and then I smoothed it out and I polished it up. Okay, okay. Um, that's a little detail. Uh, oh, this is a mirror setup. This is fine. Uh, this is a Pangea mirror. Dude, so I saw this, I found this mirror like. I'm gonna say like a year and a half ago. I remember. And it's site, always sold his out. Site never stocks. Bro. No. And then I put my name in the notification to like tell me when it comes in stock, and it came in stock, and I ordered it. Literally the next day, sold out. Wow. So I waited a year and a half to finally buy one of these, dude. <laughs> Find out he just made two. Yeah. So <laughs> before that, like I had another mirror that was mounted to the 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 fork fork I tube, that. and then it just hung out right here. Yeah. And I mean, pure transparency. Yeah. Uh, is it usable? It is usable. Okay, so you, yeah. Oh, it's convex. So yeah. You can actually see it yeah, right you could. Yeah, def, this is definitely. Uh, okay, it's convex. Usable. Yeah, it's, because I've seen the ones that come out from the trees. Yeah. But when the mirror isn't convex. Yeah, and I put it on this side for when I'm entering the freeway, because you know the oncoming traffic. Uh, this is another detail. Um, yeah, yeah. Show me. This show is me. the uh, two finger grip uh clutch lever and it's only made for the newer harleys That's where the clutch uh the clutch cable has the eye yeah so i hit up uh barnett clutch cables uh -huh. and i had them make me a cable to run 
the, you know, to put the eye on the, the what? yeah, no, I just called them. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, Hey, um, I want to run a newer style Harley clutch lever, but I have a shovel head. And they're like, Oh, we can make you a custom one. It's oh, like 60 bucks for the custom that's cable. So cool. So that's how I'm able to run this. Cause if you have a shovel head, the four speed transmission is a bitch to pull in, bro. Like Bad. it sucks. Like when you're at a light and you're holding yeah. your clutch in your fucking forearm starts burning <laughs> from like holding it. So, like, Cause it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And this, like I'm chilling with two fingers fingers bro wow. like all day just it's so much easier and it looks freaking great is that that's the finish it came in yeah they make them in chrome and then they have like the stock one where this is black is and then so this fire. is like silver what about these uh these little grip uh little a accents right uh here? this i call it my pinky ring <laughs> uh, uh the pinky ring is from prism okay they make them that color yeah okay. they make them in brass polish um any of these grips too what is this these are owl grips from japan oh owl yeah um, um, I found a guy at the SoCal Cycle Swap. Yeah, he just he had like a uh, a couple of these. Dude, you know how much he charged me for these grips? Oh, like ninety. 120 bucks ah. for some grips. <laughs> Fuck. But I was like, you know what, man? You only live once. Yeah, there we go. Get, get what you want, you know? Well, we've spent Actually, it. like I walked around first. And I was like, Fuck, should I get them? And then I went back and I said, fuck it. So I got them. It's running a Prism Supply Super Prism throttle. I have a zip tie on here because for whatever reason, the throttle cable pops off because this plastic piece lifts up. Yeah, so that's why I have this. So it does, and I mean, it solved the issue. Um, and then this is a Barnett um, cable, or not, I'm sorry, no, this isn't Barnett. This is from Prism too. Okay. Yeah, this is a Prism throttle cable yeah let's start on the carb yeah talk to so me. i wanted a makuni mm -hmm. just because like those midwest guys they they they, they run the makunis but like again there's no information on how to fucking run a makuni on a shovel head and most guys will run the um it's that rubber boot yeah i've seen that with a uh, like a converter to the oh, that's right to the sns um uh, intake manifold. Yeah, and then I found Vulcan, a, a company called Vulcan. They make this billet adapter. Oh, but it wouldn't fit because this throttle part was like hitting this, which is why I'm not running the old stuff hard oil lines anymore because I couldn't use it anymore. Oh. It wouldn't work with this carb. Uh -huh. So I had to buy this space, this billet spacer, to push the carb out, and then that mounts to the 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 Vulcan adapter. Vulcan. Okay, yeah. Okay. Damn, all that just. Geez. Yeah, just to fit the car. But it came out sick because I like how it like sticks out, oh, you yeah, know? It's tough. I'm looking at that. Yeah. You can't not look at the car. Yeah. And then they, and then no one makes a velocity stack for this car. Ooh, talk to me and about And most that. guys that run a Makuni on a shovel head, they just run it open. I see that all the time. Yeah. So I found a guy on, like, I went, I researched yeah. again on Google. I'm like, <laughs> fucking Google. custom velocity stacks, you know? <laughs> and I found a guy, I, I think he's in Michigan, and he makes a uh, custom velocity stack for like hot rods and then i yeah. sent him my dimensions and he made one for me yeah. i mean it was pricey don't get me wrong because okay, okay. it came from what like a literally like a block of aluminum you know what i mean he had to make this for yeah, you he, bro yeah yeah not for the shell but now it's crazy he sells them on ebay for like four hundred dollars oh hit him <laughs> Yo, I didn't pay 400. Yeah, 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 but, but you did the R and D. Yeah, and I thought that what I paid was a lot because I paid two two thirty for it mm -hmm. just for the velocity stuff. And now ID he's price. selling them for fucking four hundred dollars. <laughs> pre-sale. Yeah, I got the pre-sale. And then, man, I mean, I, my eyes always go straight to this one whenever I see your bike, bro. The points cover. Yeah, the points cover is from my homie um, in Canada. He uh, fourth floor fourth floor choppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made that. Dude, it's like woven. Yeah, he did, he does that by hand. If you don't follow fourth floor choppers, like you are sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I take a lot of pride in in like my efforts and things, but this dude like is twenty four seven working, bro. Like he's a fucking workhorse, and it's crazy because he works. The reason why his shop is called fourth floor or his name is fourth floor choppers, he lives on the fourth floor of an apartment complex. Yeah, and he builds motorcycle okay. parts from the fourth floor and he's always saying oh my neighbors hate me because he's like running this grinder that's fine this fucking plasma cutter what do you say he's out of uh canada, canada. yeah okay. fourth floor choppers and then this is the um pop top from fna that's a uh um, oh, for the uh that's the uh oil, oil pressure, pressure oil pressure gauge okay okay so it pops up my, yep, my yep. pressure this pedal bro and then this pedal's from ben jeff he makes them and like 
he's always out of stock. And then I was like, dude, let me know when you do another run. I want one. So I got that from him. Transmission is the original fourth speed with Andrew's yeah. gears. Original fourth speed, huh? Yep. So it has Andrew's gears in it, which is why it fucking shifts like butter. And then I just like re-geared it with the. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. With the uh, what is it called? The um, the sprockets. Okay. I think originally it came with a 51. Okay. And then I went down to a 48. And that made all the difference. Yeah, because I can, I can cruise 90 no yeah. problem. And you didn't change the final drive, did you see it? Yeah, just nice. the, just the rear one. Right. I was running a 47, but I kind of lost uh, some torque on the low end. 48 was like the money spot. 48. Yeah. And I don't need to go any faster than 90 anyway. No, so. Man. <laughs> but yeah, this thing cruises at 90, and it's not screaming. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a great. Like thing. it's still purring. I might actually have to look into that because yeah okay okay i believe this is a jeff cochran swing arm but don't quote this me on it. on it right yeah it, i bought the bike with the swing arm but yeah. it has the adjustable like um, screw or uh, bolt holes yeah so you can move it back to lower it or raise it oh dude I and i know know. jeff cochran's the only one that makes these style swing arms for for uh the old big twins i had no idea it even had that dude mm -hmm. i've seen your bike a million times in person yeah. and i never caught that and yeah. it, you have it at the utmost stock position uh or? somewhat i can go one more higher oh, okay okay but like this is like perfect because i could put some, like i ride with my daughter sometimes so yeah. like it's perfect if i have a passenger oh that's awesome it doesn't rub at all it's a gma master cylinder and then i got these stainless anderson pegs this is like one of my favorite details yeah just because like when you flip it up it's like polished oh wow well, yeah no detail missed right there yeah that's, i mean that's pretty much this whole bike what i'm catching is that it's like not to spare details man i mean yeah i just like the little sh like little things that like only i notice you know like if other people notice it then then, then they appreciate it there's but... not even a hood to hide anything <laughs> you better <laughs> yeah yeah the oil bag is from paco, paco it has oil. a uh, oil filter attached to it on the other side um, I got this from my homie Dustin, who he owns Off Track, because my stock one started leaking. He was like, oh, I have, because he went hardtail, and this is meant for a swing arm. Oh, you're so right. So he actually gifted it to me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then I had to, like, make this little mount myself. Ooh. Because, like, I have the big starter, oh, have starter motor. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the, the original mount was meant for the small starter motor, so I had to, like, shave it down and make this little thing to, oh, I see to hold it up. Damn. Uh, yeah, because this bike is very mechanically sound. Yeah. Bells like, and whistles doesn't like, shake. Yeah, and like I said, man, like for me, like the bike has to ride better than it looks. Mm -hmm, I like that. Yeah, because I ride it so much, you know? Yeah. And like you can't, you can only enjoy so much by looking at it. Yeah, like I enjoy bro. this bike from riding it, you know? Like, <laughs> Dude, no, I've ridden it. You had me ride it that Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Went to, uh, oh, yeah, when we went to uh, Dana Point. Bro, Dude, I'm, and that's another thing. Like, yeah. if you want to ride my bike and you have a license or you ride, ask me. I will let you ride this bike. Dude, you because you will, you will appreciate this bike, like, even more yeah. after you ride it. Oh, I've, dude, trust me. Like, I've appreciated it for as much as I could. Right. The moment after I rode it, mm -hmm. I realized there are some off the lot or newer bikes I've ridden that don't feel right, same, right. like as solid. It's yeah, really yeah. Tight, a lot bro. of people say that that ride this bike, they're like, man, it rides like a newer bike. It's but tight. you still have that like vintage, like, you feel the you know, like feel. it's still mechanical, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so not. You still feel the valve yeah. shaking under you. Oh, this is another thing I wanted to oh, share. Yeah, talk to me, bro. So the tail light, uh, I, Rick Swadner made this tail light. Yeah, yeah. And it has like a vintage Duray lens on it, Duray electrical mm -hmm. or Duray electric. And then this plate, I got it obviously custom made by the state with 77 shovel. Oh yeah, yeah. But the guy that painted it, um, Mike Clary, mm -hmm. he uh, rest in peace to him, man. He just he just passed away earlier this year, and um, he bought some parts off of me, and he was like, man, I could paint your. He 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 he's a painter for like hot rods, but he also does motorcycles on the side. Uh -huh. But he's like, I could paint your plate. This was his idea. I could paint your plate to like look like the 70s style color you know bro he did and he painted this for me man so th job. again this is a another sentimental item on this bike just because mike was such an awesome dude and he passed away earlier this year from like uh surgery complications and he has a wife and two kids and like i can only feel i i can't even say i i could feel for his wife but mm -hmm. Like, I feel horrible for what happened to him, you know? Yeah, and like, that's the thing is when you create, when you, those people walking there, the people watching this right now, when you create yeah. anything, you're leaving something behind. Yeah, yeah, you know and yeah, and he left you know? this, he left this for me, man. And so. he didn't think about it like that. No one ever no. does, you know, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, rest in peace. It's, and it's on your bike, bro. Yep, yep. And then this helmet you're holding? Uh, this is uh, Joe King. 
Dude, Joe King it. helmet. It's, it's pretty wild, sick. Bro. But um, yeah, let's go to the Fender. This is a yeah. rogue Fender from Lowbrow um, with the Fender struts from Lowbrow. Um, and then I added this little chrome trim because, like, I was doing my helmet. Remember, you yeah, saw it? Yeah, I already know. I had, a, that from. I had a helmet from Custom Destruction, but didn't have the chrome lining. Yeah. So I picked this up from Amazon for like ten bucks, it's, and it came with like a fucking twenty foot roll. So I had extra and the chrome door. Dude, it fit perfectly though. Dude, it. So that's how that came about. Bro, it <laughs> like you, you have to notice that. Yeah. The lines on the fender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't not, bro. <laughs> like, right. It looks so good. Uh, uh, what seat are you rocking? Bro. Uh, this is a uh, King, I think he calls it a King Cobra from uh, Old Gold Garage. Old Gold. Yeah. I think he's out of Pomona or something like that. Yeah, I love seeing, not not even just American made parts, but California yeah. parts on the California bike is so cool, man. Yeah. And then this is uh, from Speed Dealer, this uh, brass uh, bayonet gas cap if you can't point anything out specifically right now mm -hmm. i got a question what was the earliest memory of motorcycles you had dude from from diapers dog like from uh, diapers what was the earliest memory whether it's like real life a cartoon a movie yeah probably fucking top gun <laughs> yeah wait that but that's like when you're like Ooh. yeah i was like damn he looks cool on the bike yeah remember he had the girl on the back oh, for sure <laughs> dude, i was like i gotta be a top gun <laughs> <laughs> that, so that was it huh Do you remember no you know what i'll be honest with you that didn't motivate me to get by, get into oh, yeah, bikes sure. but, but it was that was like memory. my first yeah where i remember like motorcycles being cool oh okay so like, and there was this guy in my old neighborhood when i was where i grew up on the west side of long beach his name was lee and he used to ride around on a street bike up and down my house doing wheelies and like i remember seeing him on that and i'd be like damn i want a motorcycle one day Damn, so Top Gun and the homie. Yeah, yeah. The Keeping homie around. Lee, yeah, yeah. Damn, so do you remember how old you were when uh, when you were watching Top Gun and you're like, oh, that's cool. I don't know, probably like seven. Like you were hype. Yeah, hype. So cool. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, in your adult life, uh, when did you first buy a motorcycle? I think it was like 2005. 2004, 2005, something like that. Uh-huh. And what was the bug that bit you, man? What got you on, and what was it? All my homies had, we had a, a we had a, a motorcycle club called Frontline. Hard. But they were all stunt riders, like, Ooh. with street bikes. And I didn't want a street bike. I was like, man, <laughs> all you guys are, like, I like to be different sometimes, yeah. you know? So, like, I got, I wanted, like, a chopper, because, like, at the time, like, Jesse James was, like, blown up, you know right. what I mean? I was like, man, I want a bike like Jesse James. And then I saw the price, I was like, fuck, maybe I, I can't afford a bike like Jesse James. So then I saw this Honda the shadow 750 i was like ooh, and then i started researching it and what's crazy is that at the time casa customs was still doing it uh, off of craigslist right yeah like he was he that. was still built like what he's doing today yeah. he was doing that when i first got into bikes I remember in like that. 2005 so that's his his bikes were like my like they were on my vision board like man i want my bike to look like that and i picked up a uh shadow 750 that was my first bike um Damn. And then like I kind of made it I didn't really make it look like a chopper But I made it look more like a um, Like the word I put is tough bro Yeah like it, it, Yeah it was a fun bike man that, But that was my first bike Okay um, Yeah and then as time passes You know things evolve You change And it's funny my One of my friends said like The changes that I do to my bike Is a reflection of the changes That are happening in my life And then I thought about it I was like fuck man you're right Like like right now I'm at a really good place in my life and like my bike is like, this is the best version that I've ever had of my bike, Dude. in my opinion. And right now I feel like I'm like reaching the best version of who I am, you know what I mean? And that's like Very an extent, that's like an extension of, of, of who I am. It is, it is a true reflection. <laughs> yeah, bro. like cause there was no expense spared on this bike. Yeah. Like as you can see, like I, I spent a lot of money on this shit. <laughs> And bro, like it's priceless though, man. Yeah, like, it is. You get, like sure. I, fuck yeah, man. Every day I, I, you know, I roll this bike out and I just stare at it. Like, damn, this is my bike. And you know what? Sometimes it's hard to believe, you know. Yeah, man, I, I, I believe that because I also believe in that saying is that you're only as cool as you feel you are, man. And like, yeah. It's cute to downplay it sometimes. Like I know one. It, right, right. Sometimes, man. Right, but right. you really need that umph. If no one's gonna give it to you, you gotta yeah. Do it yourself, and it's not. And for me, it's not even about like being recognized by anyone. Like uh, I, I could care less. Yeah. You know, if I, if I'm doing something right like people cheer me on if I'm doing something wrong people are like they hate on it you know they're, they say oh you're like being lazy or whatever mm -hmm. so regardless people are gonna talk about what you're doing you know yeah but for me like I don't even care about that for me it's just finding you know 
my true self and being proud of myself you know what yeah, i mean of course man and uh, yeah that's just that's why this is what it is and then it's cool that people are a fan of what i put together yeah dude i mean that and because there's more to it man when, yeah. when i see the bike i'm not just thinking of the physical object i know who's behind it bro i, right. I see a dedicated disciplined yeah yeah <laughs> saying, head thank on you shoulder. man i appreciate yeah, it trust me I don't not see it. And, yeah. and I think it's silly sometimes when people just swipe and double click, but like yeah, they yeah. don't get to know what's behind it because, right. dude, these things are dope, but at the end of the day, there's someone behind them. And I believe they're more important yeah. than like, they yeah, always yeah, are, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that's why I love, you know, the unaffiliated channels because you highlight that with like the people that you put on your channel, you know? For sure, Like man. you highlight like the reality of, of like what daily life is you know what i mean like yeah it's not like you're 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 creating content to like get clicks or whatever like you're just putting out like real shit and that's why i think it's awesome that dude you were literally on video number one i know i zero, remember zero one, two, six, <laughs> and yeah I mean, years later. that was that was the beginning of the pandemic too which is crazy <laughs> bro in the ghost town? yeah bro everything was all empty. that shit was so sick dude and like to, to that extent i know uh covid really kick-started a lot of people to you know kind of find themselves right right the group. right but um if someone's watching this right now covid's long gone whether they're 14 or 41 and they don't yeah, have yeah. a motorcycle but they always thought they were cool but you know they don't have friends into it right they don't have uncles or families into it what would what advice would you give to someone who literally just like you know sees it as like wow that's so cool but they feel like they don't have a door like an entrance to it i mean if i'm gonna be as real as it gets like for me if if it's something i want i don't question it i just fucking do it mm -hmm. like if it's a part i want if you know if it's a friend i want to be friends with like a job like I just fucking go after it because the worst that can happen is no okay and life goes on you know what I'm okay, saying that's good. so like if you're in, if you really want a motorcycle fucking get one if you can afford it just get it you know like yeah get it like when I got my first motorcycle I didn't even have a license I didn't even know how to ride a motorcycle yeah get the but motorcycle. I really wanted one you know like and all my friends had one but I didn't want the same bike as them so like I went in my own lane I I got the bike that I got at the time, which was that Shadow. Like, I didn't question it. I just said, fuck it. I did it, you know? That worked and, out, bro. And yeah. like, years later, you you might not have seen this as your end result from right, the right. first time you hopped on the Shadow. You yeah. Know? And I mean, I had a big gap of not writing from like when I became an adult. Like, I, <laughs> you know, I met my ex-wife and then the whole time that I was with my ex-wife and I was married, like, I didn't write at all. So that was from 2009 to 2020 when the pandemic started. Oh, that's, oh okay. And then when the pandemic started, that's when I I picked up money bag and that was like my first bike back since that long gap you know uh -huh. and now like i have this reputation of fucking uh, the motorcycle guy you know and and that's another thing like a lot of people need to understand that every day is a new opportunity for you to reinvent yourself no matter who you are or who you want to be like if you have air in your lungs and you wake up the next day, you could be whoever the fuck you want to be, as long as you're proud of that person, you know? It's funny, cause like a lot of, like my ex-wife would be like, who are you, you know? Like you wear dickies and like you're this motorcycle guy. Because when I was married, like I, I was like all about my career and like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like this fucking corporate American, um, American, America dude. And now it's like, I found like, just found my passion for, for writing and. <laughs> That's good though, because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the internet or just the day and age we live in, but I feel like there's some like unrealistic deadline on people. Yeah. For, like as if there's an age thing, but dude, do you recall how old Jay-Z was when he, when he popped off? Like, uh, uh, like when his album took off? I mean, I first heard of him in 96 with Foxy Brown. But like, yeah, like he's he's a big influence on me too, you know. Like oh, he's like one of like he's like one of my favorite artists of all time. Not only because of his, I mean, his music is really dope, but just like the way he like carries himself, you know. I remember I told you that story where I I, I, I saw him, I saw live, him right? for the first time live. Like I remember, man, I was standing there, and we were like pretty close to the stage. And I remember like we waited almost two hours for him to come out which was a dickhead move on his part because he had no openers, you know? Yeah. So it's just everyone waiting. And then he comes out, man. I just remember this 
fucking feeling of like holy shit this dude is like the real deal you know like you just it's felt you, huh? you just felt like the presence of money dude like <laughs> this guy is like fucking like you felt success you know yeah, what i mean whether whether he had to do or say anything or not you felt it right yeah i felt it man and like and for me like like i like nice things you know so my bike is kind of a reflection of that like i like to buy nice nice parts and you know stuff like that so it, it encourages me to work harder so i can afford to to do those things you know that's a great lesson in that. for me motorcycles are more than you know the aesthetic part of it it's so therapeutic man like on a stressful day from work or stressful day from anything man i get on my bike i don't think about anything like my mind just sh clears all i focus on is the road and like you know, obviously the people around me, so I'm yeah, not, yeah. I don't get, <laughs> you know? I don't crash and shit, but like, I, I can't be on my phone, you know, like, yeah. Like yeah, my mind is just going. my bike. My mind is just in tune with the motorcycle and the road in front of me, man. That's it. As it should be, but the thing is, like, you'll be surprised how many fools be rocking their phone mount on the front. I know. And I mean, sometimes I'll do that, you know, yeah. like I'll I'll, I'll film a oh, film no, myself for, riding, for but sure. um, but, but like, for the most part, like motorcycles are. It's more than like I said. It's more than a fun time, man. It's so therapeutic. Like the wind in your face, just you know, the vibration of the throttle, like everything is just. I don't know. It's spiritual to me, man. <laughs> oh, I get that, bro. And like I found, like I found my love for motorcycles because of what it's what it what it continues to do for me on, on that kind of level, you know. Like there'll be days like where I have a shitty day and I'll just jump on my bike and I feel better again. You're right. You can't, <laughs> you can't get stuck in traffic all pissed right. this after a long day. Yeah. And then, then also on top of that, like you get to meet cool people. Like I met you through you, motorcycles, you, you know. Did, man. That's you get so to meet cool. really dope people, and like these are people that you would you 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 thought that you would never cross paths with. Like and how, like, how else would you and I have ever met? Yeah, like, right. Two three years ago. I know. How how? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. And d that summer, like we rode a lot. <laughs> had it not been for motorcycles, like not yeah. all cheesy, but had it not been for bikes. Where would we cross paths? Like, exactly. And I wouldn't even say yeah. that. We just walk by. No, absolutely, man. You're right. And it's funny, too, because I remember, and I, I don't know if you recall this, but, like, at the time, you had the, you were filming. Yeah. I was like, man, you, you should start a YouTube. Fuck it. Just put your energy into to, to filming, you know, and, like, creating content and, like, yeah. pumping it out. I remember when we first talked about it, like, we were saying, like, it'll be dope to just f film for, like, history you know like for our grandkids and our kids to watch later on i can still look back at that malibu video yeah yeah yeah. Ooh, and yeah and we would <laughs> remember i had my old gopro and i would like strap it on <laughs> yeah i think you had an older gopro at the first worst, too <laughs> yeah. sucked, all shaky. <laughs> and that's when john john lived lived down here and i remember he he would bring his gopro and we yeah. were just trying to like have a good time you know what i mean <laughs> I the beauty of documenting the channel long term is yeah. that yeah Faces come and go, faces return. Right, faces right. Don't go anywhere, and it, it just it feels good. Yeah. Like some people will be like, "Oh, the OG cast and crew is in no, this one." Man, I'm like, "Well, yeah, here's the I, OG." Right here. I feel like, uh, yeah, it's it's history. It's yeah, like, and I'm really glad what that you're I, into now. You know what I mean? Is different than what you were into three years ago. Yeah, and yeah. obviously, the bikes change. You, you know, change. now you're now you're on the the new Evo Sporty. Yeah, like, zoom in. Yeah, it's like it, you're it, getting it, better it, equipment. You know what I mean? Oh, like, you're right. <laughs> we got a mic now. Like, <laughs> shout out AOJ for that. Yeah, I like, get you, man. I we're here forever. Yeah, and if if you guys have been keeping up with this channel, it's like you guys are in for like real life history you know like this is gonna be around forever yes and i'm i'm dude i'm honestly honored bro i know yeah. like we're homies but i'm still personally even as friends very honored that you even yeah spend and for time. anyone watching this like if you guys want to continue like keeping up with this stuff and see the evolution of of the unaffiliated channel support all his merch you know Thank you. support all the merch because that's what's gonna help push you to that next level you know i want to keep it going yeah man because i know you have the drive but it's not easy when you're not getting paid for it you know what i'm saying and the only way that you can start is from all the support that you get from people watching your your channel for sure man and i feel that support that that yeah you know the the support will fill my heart as much as it can but right. you know the heart can't pay the bills <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> being transparent exactly. i you know i i appreciate everyone anyway uh, yeah, yeah. through and through but bro okay down to this bike let, let, let's get it let, let's get it back to 
if you had to choose right now, uh -huh. say you had a ride home uh -huh. from here to uh -huh. your pad and you only choose one song as your theme song playing in the background, <laughs> bro, like, it's a movie. It's a movie, man. Spielberg got you cruising up the street to a song on this right now. It's called My First Song by, by Jay-Z. Hey, for real? Yeah. Okay, so that's the, that's that, the tone. Like if, if, like back in the day when I was like heavy into snowboarding, I, I, I used to say if I had a snowboard part, it'd be that song and in my snowboard like part. My first song, right? <laughs> yep. My first song, Jay-Z. Yep. If you had the chance to replace any lead actor in any movie uh -huh. and the remake is happening and you're the lead, who are you putting <laughs> in what movie? I want to, hey, I really want to know this, bro. I want to ask this over phone, uh, bro, I'm asking right now. <laughs> damn, I don't know. Probably Ryan Gosling in the notebook <laughs> are you serious yeah i'm dead serious is it what for the actress or what no nah, because that's my favorite movie is it <laughs> you want to be ryan gosling in that movie yeah you replace him yeah and roll up on this yeah playing jay-z yeah. yeah 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 first song yeah <laughs> damn dog how random is that <laughs> <laughs> okay, i did not see that coming bro uh, yeah did you ever grow up watch, watching wrestling I did. And then, okay, so I, it's hard to say favorite, but if you could put your top three wrestlers. Uh, top three, Undertaker for sure. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ultimate Warrior. Ooh. He's a good one. And Bret Hart. Hey, rock star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I get that. Shawn Michaels was sick too. Shawn Michaels was a heartbreaker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you're thinking about like pulling <laughs> in on the entrance to this yeah, yeah. and playing Jay Z. Say it's the end of the line and you have to choose your last meal. You have one meal. Last you, meal. Last meal, bro. <sighs> Probably be uh, omakase, like a good omakase dinner. What is that? Sushi. Oh, damn, I ain't eating it like that. Omakase is when like the chef chooses oh, what to feed like you. Oh, that would be the. Yeah. Okay, my last. What, my... what would your beverage be? Uh, fuck, an old fashioned. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dead or alive, whether they're here now or working, mm -hmm. they're gone. Mm -hmm. Who would you have dinner with right now? Damn. Fuck, I don't know. Uh, damn, that's a hard one. I mean, take I would time. probably choose. I mean, I don't have any family members that really that pass because they're all still alive, thankfully. But uh, I'd probably choose. I don't know, J Lo. She's hot. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Where, where, you take, hey, where would you take her? There's no object. Where are you gonna take her? I would take her to Isla. Where's that? That per, uh, that Cuban restaurant that I'm always at. <laughs> that, uh, Isla? Yeah. Okay, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then say after the dinner, she's like, "Oh, let's just catch a movie real quick. What movie are you gonna take her to go see?" The you Notebook. Pick any movie. The Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> that was solid. We would watch The Notebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> bro, we we watch The Notebook in, in my living room. <laughs> and then when it's over, turn that Jay Z on. Yeah, that outro would be the Jay Z song. <laughs> dude, that is fire. I, I mean, oh I my gosh, this. dude, we could do a full on. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that, that. So whoever you heard in this video right now, that's the full writing. Just, when you see this, he's thinking about J Lo. He's bumping Jay Z. He's thinking about himself from Omakase, bro. <laughs> Watching the Notebook. <laughs> Watching the Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit, that's funny. I'm good with it if you are. And yeah, I'm good. Do the mandatory startup video and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do I gotta kick it? <laughs> oh yeah, you have to kick it, even though it's like. Alright, let's see. Let's see if it'll kick. Hold on. Alright. All right, this bitch. I give up. And now I'm saying the headlight's on. Is it? It does it now. Oh, my battery died. And this is real life. Damn. Wait, did it? I think so. Yeah. This should still be able to kick over. No, oh, why is my battery not on? Wait, watch, watch, turn, turn your headlight on. You had it, it was on. Is it on? Oh, now it's on. Oh yeah, that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's been sitting since last week. I'm tired. <laughs> J-Lo, come save This is what happens when you try to be cool. Not oh. <laughs> And kick your bike over. Hey, that's the reality, bro. You Fuck, I wonder why the... You didn't have time to cruise this. I wonder why the battery died, though. Well, hold on, your headlight on and it's off. This is so weird. I like how it cuts to the action cam now. It's like, hold up, things are happening. Dude, you literally 
Yeah, we're just chilling with this. That does not make sense. Yeah. We, we rode it here. Bro, your headlights on. What did you touch? You touched something down there. Hold up. Yeah, it was the brake, the brake wire. Oh, we? Oh, shit. Okay, I think I can start it down. Oh. Oh, shit. Dude. Oh. Look at the <laughs> the light right here it pulled the running light <laughs> 